where they're saying you're good, maybe just... Okay, uh, a couple of HGC open games, so this will be exciting. Let's get into it, folks. Um, okay, 12 minute and 13, you weren't lying. Yeah. Okay, uh, what do we got here? Oh. Against Crosby's team. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jump into the first one. Who took who to which map? Uh, I want to say we chose Sky Temple and they chose Dragon Shire. I think Dragon Shire game is actually second, but it's not a big deal. We can start off with a win and make me feel good. <laughs> Have you, uh, you've been playing a little bit of Hero League today, right? Yeah. What is your opinion on the voice comms? It is excellent, and I am so happy. Just straight up a benefit, eh? Yeah, like, there, I don't... I haven't heard of anybody playing mid-voice chat. It's been very good. To me, it seems like if somebody does start flaming too, it'll be so much easier to just shut them up. Like, if they don't shut up immediately by probably a choir of people saying what they're saying is offensive, I'm sure that you can just quickly mute them, and then aren't you just better off? Yeah. All right. Okay. Do you know how this draft went at all? Um, I want to say we last picked Kerrigan. Um, I think we took Lucian Matteo first round and then Garage Hanzo second. Uh, I think they first picked Blaze. Uh, and then I want to say they took Rhaegar Genji after that. Okay. And then I think a new Dan after that. Ripping the Kerrigan into the Blaze. Hey, there's an interesting one. Hey, here's a fitness. Thanks for the... Thanks for the host. Welcome, everybody. Um, yeah, okay. We got it. Strong solo laner. Pretty even. Blaze doesn't lose too, too hard. I gotta get my head in the game right now. Battle I went for a run earlier, and I'm feeling seconds. kind of Five, fuzzy brain. Three, okay, we got Genji. Two, we got... One. Let the battle begin. I thought this was serious for a second. Okay. No, no, we're... <laughs> We play against them a lot, so we kind of joke around. Okay. So yeah, just to start this off, this is Winterheart, one of the uh, Patreon supporters. Uh, we've done these with him before. This is his team in the HGC Open Division. You said this was round of 64? Yeah. Okay, so very beginning of the bracket, but still really solid teams in the Open Division. So any, any team-based players out there, you can gain some information from here. All right. Um, this is a likely scenario, and I can you can basically assume this every single time that you have the winning solo lane, that a lot of times, not a lot of times, but sometimes they'll be willing to hover a hypermobile hero like a Genji or a Tracer or something like that around the top side. Not saying that's what this Genji is doing, but that is something that they can do, and that's something that your team should always talk about. Um, okay, Redemption. You can step up into this quite well, actually. Yeah, while Genji was staying hidden, we were kind of playing not like super aggro. I uh, just yep. wanted to clear and move on, but... But you guys don't even clear the full wave. I think we leave Garrosh there while we go and start taking bottom. Okay, let's see how this works out, because it seems weird to me. Now they win mid wave. Okay, and then we end up coming back and splitting you off Ooh. and you guys get the kill okay so it ends up working out jeez the value of that totem right there holy cow yeah i know i should have just killed it but yeah i wanted to get redemption stacks i got greedy <laughs> i feel you got the lucio it's not the end of the world single yeah e-trade you look for this this is something you should always assume against a Regard. Do you guys know that they're doing this at, at this point? Yeah, I think we yeah. assumed, but we weren't super confident going in on that yep. quite yet, so we just took ours instead. See? And I feel like this is a misplay already. You guys have already displayed, like, you get the one pick off, you've displayed the dominance, like, you have complete control over the mid portion of the map, and you have a Kerrigan. Why not step into this? If you bring your, if you bring your Garrosh over here as well, you can straight up just throw the Regar over the wall. That's true. And you guys are perfectly safe. They don't have a global to respond, so this is an honest 4v4, and this is why we see the Genji hovering top, because 
They're saying with their team right now, okay, we can't actually win this four man, so we have to try to win somewhere else or look somewhere else, at least for right now. I think this is an absolutely you should be looking for this. Okay. Especially, especially because of what's happening mid here, right? You guys have the wave pushed up quite a bit. It's not the entire wave pushed up, but it's most of it. And he's just hanging out here. So the only way he gets on here is if he aggressively rotates, but then you guys just turn on him and kill him or he just ease away and then you guys can just collapse in or you collapse here. He comes, um, he ease onto you guys from here and you toss him over the wall and then there's literally nothing you can do. Yeah, I think this is a really solid invasion. And it's almost, all, if you have the Kerrigan, you should be looking for that. She's so strong. Especially before cleanse. I think he might have also been a little low on mana on Kerrigan. So, he, yeah, he went and tapped after that camp. Yeah. Um, probably spent some mana on the camp as well. Mm -hmm. Pick up mid. Now you guys should probably just be pushing this in rotating bottom and pushing in with your siege if possible. You can take most of the wall. Go. Wait for the waves to show up. The unfortunate thing is this, uh... They're just dead looking at topside. Still a kill. Nice free DK. It's good. Either or, you guys, instead of taking the wall, used your uh, aggression to pick up the DK. Which is good. Because uh, top was actually able to stand on beacon. Malthale's insane. Yeah, he's really good. What are your thoughts on the Malthale changes? Um, I think it, like, it lowers his laning slightly by giving him a better team fight, which I still think he's insane, but uh, just in a slightly different way. I still think he wins most matchups, though. Move on to the next game, Ragnarok. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is a very, very good game to have Kerrigan into. No way of escaping in the Regar. No way of escaping in the Gul'dan. It's a, <laughs> it's a tough one. Okay, so far we've only noticed one little bit of a misplay on easies. This is this is getting quite out of control at this point. Mouthill even just having the time to come down mid and push this out, rotate top. How does this happen? I look away for half a second, Genji dies. Oh, it just gets clipped. Yeah, raw comboed like that. It's a rough one. Yeah. See what I mean? <laughs> Literally nothing that this hero can do. And this is why, I mean, you guys should be just trying to take as much as you can during the early game because until the cleanse comes through, and even so, you just burn a single Kerrigan combo. She's got uh, bladed momentum, and you burn that, or you use the Kerrigan combo for a cleanse. That's the most worthwhile thing in the world. Yeah, like look at this. It's so free against a Golden. And what do we do off this? I see a really big play. What are we doing? Um, I think we double camp in a second. Yeah. Should be neutrals and then to their easies. Yeah. Good. I think we get like hyper greedy with it even and take ours too. I think that's fine. Cause you can Sonic Arrow right here and not cap forever. Especially when people are showing. But you don't even, <laughs> you just Please assume. <laughs> That's something, okay, that is something that you should make sure you do. If you're going to okay. make a play like this, I guess you swap out with Lucio, so it doesn't really matter, but even if you don't know where three of them are, what happens if three of them come in and check here? Because you don't yeah. see them here. You can just Sonic Arrow and do the same play. 
But I think I the figure we fine. also had the wave pushed up, so if they were gonna walk, they would have had to walk a very specific path to get down. That's true. They would have had to wait for the wave to be here and then. All right. Well, this is. You guys can actually end off of this, but it doesn't look like it quite happens yet. Five more seconds. Actually, you don't end. You get keep for free. This is a free keep play. The only difference between this and, and the and the end is the fact that now DK has spawned. If DK spawned and everything is here, we just snap cap, pick up DK, and then push in. And you can maybe end with the team fight off of taking the keep in this uh, wave. But this is definitely the safer play. You guys, interesting. Jeez, eh? Just... <laughs> okay. Um, what I wanted to say here is. If you guys don't feel like just brute forcing your teammates, okay, so a few things. This play to me looks like just a free, you can you can wall and out, pick up DK, fort plus keep. That's one play. You get all of that before 10. The other one is look for picks, get keep, then DK, take fort plus wall. Or fort plus fort and or sorry, fort plus fort wall and maybe wall. But guys just look for kills instead because you have the kerrigan it is something that you can do but if you guys ever want to play it safer you can just do that at this point i hope you know that okay because there's nothing they can if they fight into you you guys are so far ahead and you have your heroics you literally just fight in the wave and win if you dive you have the small it's a small chance that you lose but still there is the chance there what you can do instead is literally just take the wall cap dk walk it in, take keep, and then take this fort, which puts you up off this, but you guys just end up getting the DK off of it. I'm just saying this for in the future, because if you face a better team, um, not saying that these guys aren't good or anything like that, but I've seen my team do this exact same thing. You know, we are the Kerrigan team, and it can, it can go awry in situations like that. But I think here, this was pretty darn safe. They were so far from 10. We had literally everything. Two siege camps, um, the the bruiser camp bottom, and it's just the nature of their comp. They have the Regar and the Gul'dan. They actually cannot fight into it. This T is fantastic, by the way. What happens here? Can you walk me through this? Uh, but we were going to cap, and he started contesting top, and then Genji rotated, I believe. Um, I thought we were going to camp, <laughs> and then Diego decided he wanted to cap instead, and so I almost died to camp. <laughs> yeah. But that was kind of rough. But This shows a bit of a communication issue on your teams. Yeah. So there's something that you guys can definitely work on. Bill, do you? You're not even... Oh, that's why. Yeah. That's you... why. Yeah, I know. I usually go W, so I'm like, yeah, I can take care of no Uh oh. Um, and then what do we got here? Stepped up capping. I guess that's their only play. Teams need to recognize this. When a team is this far behind, literally their only play is to gank the solo laner. So you guys need anchoring for this sort of thing. We're anchoring here, but they're not going to dive in, or are they? Oh, we need to take this first. Their only play is to gank solo lane. We're trying to do two, three different things right now. Solo cap, we're trying to take cards, and we're trying to cap a DK that isn't even here yet. So this is a bit of a misplay. End up getting it, but we could have got it without a death. How do we get this without a death? Let's look. If we do this without a death, I'm trying to make this a clean game, 100% clean. Well, all you do is just send up the garage right here. Send up the garage with Lucio. Hang out right here so that uh, Mouth Hill is actually safe. You um, don't do this. Also, don't do this. Yeah, you rotate <laughs> up safely. Uh, but then you cap, and then they just they push up this wave though, and then they have somebody here. And then if you rotate back down, 
I don't know, now that I'm thinking about it, if you actually do that, then they push up mid-wave if they have somebody here, and then you guys rotate down, and then they just um, swift straight Genji on top here. Which I guess... I don't know, maybe this is the only way of getting this clean. I'm trying to find a way to do this clean. Maybe the death is the only way. I usually don't say that, but... Thinking about this, that's actually... Maybe true. Okay. Not the end of the world, though. It's just mouth ill, okay? And you guys take fort, then top wall. Or just top wall. You could just head top to get this place because he was way up. Hmm, I don't like this. Yeah, this is so bad, actually. Um, and this is why. We have a 13 talent tier advantage. Getting a kill does absolutely nothing. Like, it, it actually just does nothing for us. What we need to do instead is have bodies pushed up. This DK is still powerful. Yes, Kerrigan's in it, but still very powerful. And we're playing at a three level lead at this point. So we have to try to, like, have to have a plan with your DK always. To me, this looks like your team can very easily step up, take this for it, walk top, take this wall. Who cares what Blaze is doing? But watch. Okay. We have a DK with a three level lead, and we get. What? A little bit of damage onto this mid fort. And then DK basically just dies, gets cut off on rotation because we spend all of our time on Blaze. This entire DK gets wasted. Unless you guys probably just get team kill, team wipe here. You kill two. You you get zero structures. You get two kills off the DK, zero structures. The whole point of getting the DK is to further snowball your lead. If you can establish the lead, and that's why Kerrigan's so strong in this map, and get that 10 to 8.5 sort of lead, then at that point, you can take keep wall. And again, that other play. And then you cap both these structures. You get a DK, and then maybe you can take a keep pretty early. But then off of that, you have to keep on pushing the issue. You have to take a fort and then top wall. And then off the next DK, you take mid wall and top four. And now all of a sudden you're 16 to their 13. And then, you know, you keep pushing and all of a sudden you're 18 to their 16 and then you just don't even play hots. And then you get 20 to their 17 or something like that. And then you can end the game. Okay. But looking for kills like that doesn't help you guys in this win condition. Okay, I think we were hesitant to push because we were down Malfeo, but we already saw Blaze top, I guess it was pretty free anyway. Yeah. Look at this again. Ninja escapes, right? Dang. I'm upset. Okay, sorry. Backing up. My apologies. <laughs> Focusing on what's real here. Goldan has to back. He's just tried to brute force on the fort. This is fine. They can't fight into you. Ninja was showing bottom, and you know that Goldan is backing. That's a pretty big fear. Where is Malthale? Gets this. Does he stays for the wave? Okay. That immediately rotates up. Hero slain. Trying to find the best thing. What? How do we fix it? We don't really. I just think it was 
Lucio steps up far. They fear off of the cocoon, don't they? And then Lucio gets split with it. Yeah, right here. It's broken out, and then the fear off this backside. Boom. Fear in. Okay. But I do think Lucio being up here at any point is overextension for sure. Okay. Into a fear, but that's that's mm -hmm. really the only problem. You guys escape this, and I don't like at that point you wouldn't even have to force his heroic, and kind of just like walk back or kite back. Okay. You guys need to pick up this mid fort before they get thirteen. No horrify for another forty seconds. Lucio's down though for five. What do we do? What do we do? Soon the shrine shall and I was going to say, it feels like the Dragonite hasn't been up forever. This is a pretty bold move. But I guess the Blaze is showing on top. Yeah, Does he come down? He should be coming down right now. Soon the shrines shall awake. Because this is their last real fight at this point. This is such a good fight for them if they have Blaze in here. I guess this is grouped up with against a Kerrigan, so it can also it can go both ways. Nice. So now it's just DK, bot bruisers, and or bot bruisers DK and end. Is that what you guys do? Lawless technique. Wait, boss, I think I would hold on. I don't need the pierce because I'm not gonna whatever, it's not gonna be very useful. It's okay. okay. The sharpened arrowheads is actually like you're chunking for like twelve hundred with the Q. It is a lot, yeah. Pretty sure at this point DK just needs to hunt and now go right on to Thor. He's, help, he's helping out a little bit here. There we go. Hmm. Um. I just think you guys needed to do a little bit more with your early game. If you win this rotation so hard, and I say that, you guys get to keep it six minutes and I'm telling you to do more with your early game, but it was just, this was the major misplay that I saw. The fact that you guys are winning mid bottom side and then Kerrigan does your easies instead. Regar's okay. not showing on the map anywhere. You have to assume he's here. That's kind of why Regar gets picked up on this map. It's either to take his easies or hards. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the purpose of that hero. And there's no global to match you. So usually it can be kind of scary sometimes with Harrigan comps when you're playing against the Dahaka top because then you're like, you have to feign or you have to fight in, force the brush talk, and then somehow get out without dying. But here, you just straight up get a 4v4 in a clustered area. Like, worst case scenario, you just get hit by a Gul'dan E, but he was showing down here. It would have been a pretty free engagement, I believe. And then you guys get both easies. And then you just continue to strangulate the map. You push in bottom. You do a little bit of damage with Hanzo under the wall. Same thing mid. Mid and bottom over and over. And then once you start putting on all that pressure mid-bottom, top has to start playing safe. And I know it sucks because you're playing a Malthale, but when you're against that Genji and it's the Blaze, like Malthale just has to recognize that their only way of winning this early game and not going down 10 to 8.5 
is if Genji shows topping and kills Malthale. And then one person has to send up and then Golden gets to start taking control. Maybe they get their easies and start pushing it out. Like that's how they get back into the game. But I do think that you guys can put on a lot more pressure during that early game. Like okay. let's look at let's I just want to look at this one again. Mm -hmm. Very beginning. Dang, that replay just snapped backward. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Dude, Hold on. Hello, Blizzard. Okay. Everyone dead, monk ass. go immediately bought and i swear right off of this this is it right here trigger shows up it's ordered a few times literally shows that he's going there too and it's a minute we get first blood to me this is immediately immediately let's let's go on to their easies yeah we just restarted the replay because i do think this is the biggest mistake uh that Winterheart's team makes during the early game and then you can push in this wave first and then go do easies. I know that by that time, uh, Regar's back, but now you force them. This is, I always talk about this, man. Force your opponents to lose something no matter what. If you come here and just posture, even if you just posture, that means that they don't get this. And if they leave it, that means you do get it. And if they don't leave it and they bring up the Gul'dan over here, they're losing Soak down here. Okay. Yeah, and that's this is yeah, freaking oh my gosh, imagine if Kerrigan was right here. Mm -hmm. Red team has slain died. <laughs> A for effort. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This next one go it's pretty much the exact opposite, right? Mm 